I'm Jennifer from the Worcester branch of the Wayne County Public Library. It's time again for a review of some of my favorite upcoming holiday romances. The first book for 2023 is Christmas at the Shelter Inn by longtime holiday favorite Rayanne Thane. After years of resistance to spending the holidays in her childhood home of Shelter Springs, Natalie Shepard responds to her pregnant sister McKenna's plea for help. McKenna is on bed rest and unable either to look after her two little girls or to run the shelter in, their childhood home and now a residence of senior apartments. And McKenna needs Natalie to help her deal with the day-to-day -day things as well as her holiday preparations. Natalie's visit kicks off with a rough start as she accidentally runs her rental car off the road and must be rescued by local doctor Griffin Taylor, her late brother's best friend. While their attraction is evident from the start, Natalie fully expects to head back to her digital nomad lifestyle after McKenna's baby is born, and she doesn't think it's a good idea to get involved with Griffin. But when they keep running into each other and helping each other out, the attraction becomes difficult to resist. Rayanne Thane regularly delivers a holiday romance with heart, and this is no exception. Both the main characters have difficult family histories and plenty of heartache in their pasts, all of which have affected them deeply. Natalie, abandoned by her father after their mother's death, prefers to roam the world and avoid attachments, while Griffin struggles to prove himself worthy as a doctor and not as a carbon copy of his alcoholic father. Both have their struggles, but also their support networks, especially among the crowd of sassy seniors at the Shelter Inn, and they both learn the power of forgiveness on the way to finding their happy ever after. Next up, we have Three Holidays and a Wedding, written by authors Uzma Jalaluddin and Marissa Stapley. In this book, Christmas, Hanukkah, and the Eid celebration following Ramadan all align with a snowstorm, making travel much more difficult for Anna Gibson, Mariam Aziz, and Mariam's family, all of whom are flying from Denver to Toronto for the holidays. Anna intends to meet up with her boyfriend for a round of high society holiday events, while Mariam and her family are heading toward a quickly planned wedding between Mariam's sister, Saima, and her fiance. The weather, however, has other plans and diverts their flight to the small town of Snow Falls, where a Hollywood crew is filming a family-friendly Christmas movie. When the continuing snow and impassable roads keep them locked into this holiday haven, new friends are made, life plans are reassessed, and love finds a way. This romance brings a wonderfully diverse celebration of all the winter holidays. The plot gives Hallmark vibes, but Snow Falls is a dream town where many religions and cultures live together in harmony and mutual support. For example, the Aziz family can break their daily Ramadan fasting with takeout from one of three halal Hakka Chinese restaurants with desserts from a Turkish coffee house. The lead characters are imperfect, but realistic and worth rooting for. Anna initially comes across as a little clueless and weak-willed, but she quickly shows her kindness and openness, as well as her strength in standing up for herself. And she quickly becomes friends with Mariam and her family. Mariam has a history of putting her own needs behind those of her family, and her frustration and resentment bubbled to the surface over the trip. But she, too, learns to identify what she wants and to stand up for herself with her family. The two of them find romantic partners who support them and their dreams 
without pressuring the women into hasty relationships. For me, the beauty of a romance like this is that it shows us all how we can become our best possible selves, not just as romantic partners who practice good and honest communication, but as friends, families, neighbors, and communities who can make space for each other and our individual differences. This is the kind of holiday romance I love to see, where all religions have room to coexist peacefully and supportively and joyfully. The next book, A Holly Jolly Ever After, by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone, spices up the holidays a lot more than the first two books I mentioned. This second book in the Christmas Notch series returns the reader to the small holiday town for another movie set. This time, the Hope Channel has decided to branch out with a new holiday movie that appeals to more mature audiences. Santa Baby, the movie, stars Callum Lieberman, former boy band star, pizza entrepreneur, and Guy happily rocking a dad bod. Even though this new role as a hot Santa embarrasses his family, he is ready for the camera to roll, especially since he's learned that his co-star will be Winnie Baker, the golden good girl actress from other Hope Channel movies and his longtime crush. Winnie, who grew up in a religious family and was held up as a darling of purity culture, knows her star is tarnished after her recent divorce. Work offers dried up until this offer to star in Santa Baby, and she does want to overcome her inexperience, she's just not sure how. The idea of doing research on how to fake pleasure on screen just makes her cringe, and the only thing that seems remotely comfortable to her is to ask her cuddly co-star for help. You can see where this is going, right? Callum is a warm and friendly character, if a bit impulsive, and his honest delight in sex and his absolute attention to his partner makes him a great confidant and safe space for Winnie. Winnie is a sweetheart too, and as she learns to trust Callum and to move beyond the mindset of her upbringing, she finds tremendous joy and pleasure in giving in to her physical desires. It's not often you find two characters who simply have sheer fun with sex, but these two make the most of their time together on set. Of course, the path to true love has many bumps along the way, but it also gives characters time to learn more about themselves and about what they want. The book is a whirlwind romp that features many of the same characters, including past stars and lovers B and Nolan, from the first book, A Merry Little Meat Cute. So if you enjoyed the cozy, hilarious, fun, and sexy times from that book, you won't be disappointed. Finally, I have a holiday retelling with a twist. It's a Fabulous Life by Kelly Farmer. And as you can imagine, it's a modern day takeoff of It's a Wonderful Life. Bailey George has headed up the committee running Lanford Falls' annual Winter Wonderfest for the past 10 years. And it has taken a toll on her love for Christmas and for the town. Now that someone else is in charge, Bailey has plans to leave town during the festival and spend time in New York City. She might even check out some new job possibilities there. But when this year's organizer ends up in the hospital for emergency surgery, the mayor and everyone else in town plead with Bailey to stay and keep everything moving. And when one of Bailey's helpers, turns out to be Maria Hatcher, her high school crush and the town's new librarian, Bailey finds it difficult to say no. After years of pitching in and helping out, though, Bailey feels like she'll never get to live her own life or do what she wants, 
and even a beautiful Christmas elf in the guise of a lovely librarian can't quite revive Bailey's holiday spirit. It might take an angel, or a drag queen angel who wants to earn her wings, to show Bailey just what Lanford Falls means to her, as well as what she means to Lanford Falls. Now, don't hate me, but It's a Wonderful Life has never really been one of my favorite movies, maybe because it's just a little more sentimental than I feel at the holidays. But this retelling or update of the classic movie, while still heartwarming and sweet, feels more relatable and humorous and satisfying. Bailey's burnout is so real in this post-pandemic world as is her desire to get away and find her own path. But she also continues to fight for what makes Lanford Falls so special, which regularly pits her against the soulless real estate developer, Felicity Potter. She's surrounded by a town full of characters, from her friend Kurt, the cafe owner, to Ellis, the mayor. And while she regularly helps others, she somehow fails to see how much good she has done for the entire town. And all of that makes her happy ending so much more appealing. Maria, her second chance romantic interest, has a quiet strength of spirit. She willingly chooses to return to town for her dream job as librarian. She embraces a cheerful and kind attitude and she makes the effort to communicate with Bailey about her interest and why things didn't work out in high school. She nudges Bailey to remember what is good about their town and the holiday season, but she also doesn't set herself up as the reason Bailey should stay. Most of all, I really enjoyed how the angels, a trio of magical drag queens, were woven into the story with Clara Angel determined to help Bailey find her holiday spirit. I loved how they kept popping up, inserting a bit of humor into the story, and the final scene between Bailey and Clara had me cheering them both on. It's a fabulous new holiday classic, one that I enjoyed so much more than, than the original, with heartfelt apologies to Jimmy Stewart. All of these books are available at Worcester and through Clevenet. And you will eventually find the ebook and possibly e audiobook for these on Libby. Happy reading, your holiday happy ever afters. 